Hey, welcome to Adventures in Lolly Gagging. Uh, my group is making fun of me because making fun of me, making fun of me because I don't yeah, know how to pronounce words. That's what you yeah. do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we are playing Perils and Princesses. This is part two of the introductory introductory adventure. You guys really cursed me here. Uh, or were you always cursed? Was it really just always us pointing out your mispronunciation mm, of things? Mm. Now <laughs> yeah, right. Right. Then you were trying to be a smart ass about it and turn it back on us, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. it's bit you in the ass here, I think. I, I have think never been a smart ass <laughs> once <laughs> in my <laughs> life. It's never <laughs> happened. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're playing the Rosewood Crown, the introductory adventure uh, in the book. Uh, this is part two. Uh, our group has just come up against. Uh, sorceress villain but before we get to that uh let's introduce our princesses um say your name say your gift and tell us what boat would your dream prince or princess be uh let's start with reverse order here so let's go with jeff okay all right so oh my god i'm playing rosa bell oh wait hang on rosa bella uh of misty summit um, I, my gift is, uh, kitchen magic and I'm like really good at like foraging and making tea and goodies and concoctions and stuff and making sure that Sage doesn't end up with the wrong prince. And my favorite kind of boat is a banana boat because I could cook it because it's a banana. Get it? So See? your dream prince would be a banana boat. Well... I don't really want a prince. I just, I don't really need one. You know, like, why are we trying to define our princesses around, you know, princes? I just really want, I have my own vocation and I'm very happy with what I do in life. And I don't really need to have my life defined and my happiness defined by a prince, Stephen. Okay. So you don't need a prince. You just need a banana. I just want a banana boat. That's really all I want. You give Rosabella like <laughs> plenty of food uh, some tea and a banana and like everything's fine, you know, and she'll play the field. That's all, I don't know what I'm talking honestly about like <laughs> you have a point. Like, do you ever see a sad person holding a banana? Like that just doesn't make sense. <laughs> no. If you have a banana, you're a happy person. Uh, Melissa, who's your character? What's your gift? And what would your dream prince be as a boat? Uh, so I am Aster of the Daydream Gate. My gift is Elemental Connection, and I have a connection with air. And um, I, I, I am a little unclear about the anthropomorphic prince boat concept, um, but... Uh, we're all just going to we deny Stephen. <laughs> when we were uh, discussing boats in the Discord earlier, uh, I threw up the picture of the like flamingo shaped pedal boat. So I'm just going to answer the question with that, whether it fits or not. All right. So uh, Jeff doesn't want a prince, but does want a banana. Uh, and Melissa wants boat. to marry a flamingo. I was right there with boat. I said banana boat. Okay. Banana boat. That is a like, kind of boat. That is an actual thing. Mm -hmm. It was in Jaws for the Revenge. I know what a <laughs> banana boat is. <laughs> <laughs> and a, a, a pink flamingo pedal boat. Uh, all right. One of you's going to help me out here. Uh, and it's going to be Aaron. Because no, he's, he's a good guy and he's a good friend of mine. Uh, Aaron, who's your princess? What's your gift? And what would your dream prince be as a boat? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, Y'all must excuse me a little bit. I've got a little bit of a chest cold. So occasionally I'll be muting myself and absolutely forgetting that I need to unmute to talk because I'm clearly not that bright because I am one of the pretty princesses who does not have the two brain cells to rub together. That's all a lie. I'm very intelligent. I'm going to tell you all about it. Right now, Laura of Mossy Falls, dear, and my gift is powerful friendship, powerful friendship with a most devoted animal familiar. He's a falcon. We have not seen much of him in this adventure because, you know, he's quite weak, actually, and will totally get eaten by whatever the hell in his face. So he's going to fly around up there, and we're not going to mess with him too much. Uh, but 
if we're talking about my pants as a boat, I'm telling you now, it was going to be a Seawolf, sleek, unmanned surface vehicle with stealth capabilities and multifaceted weapon capabilities as well. Unmanned, as if to say, I don't need no prince to make me happy. I got the boat for myself. So your, your dream prince as a boat is one who just stays out of the way. Well, Can't let's just say he's got all the capabilities that I need out of a prince, but by God, he's only around when I demand his presence and then he fires at will and then he goes away. Oh, I love this. Uh, thank you, Aaron. Uh, and Kipser, bring it home. Hi, I'm Sage of Crescent Crossing. <laughs> I wrecked my voice doing this last week. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, hold on. Um, I'm I'm a wild talking princess, <laughs> uh, and Sage would uh, probably not want any boy to be a boat, but would take any boy uh, the way that I'm playing her. Uh, she is uh, very easily falling in love with everything. Um, but, you know, doesn't want them to be cursed with this boat thing because, you know, you, you have to kiss the frog and I don't really want to kiss the boat. That seems a bit awkward and all. Fantastic. Fantastic. Uh, you don't need to kiss the boat to turn him into a prince. Uh, and just get a mouthful of rust. Uh, let's start with the fairy tale story uh, that comes with this adventure to remind you all of what you're actually trying to do here. Once upon a time, there was a princess named Elysia who ruled over the humble village of Willowbrook, nestled amidst the lush embrace of the forest. The villagers of Willowbrook revered Princess Elysia. She was their guardian. Her rosewood crown, a gift from her fairy godmother, gave her the ability to channel the powers of nature and protect the villagers from harm. But even in the most enchanting of tales, darkness has a way of slithering into the hearts of the unsuspecting. A cruel conjurer, Velisar, preyed upon the princess's kindness. He stole the princess's crown for his own nefarious purposes and broke her heart. Vanishing into the depths of the forest, the sorcerer left no trace behind, leaving the princess bereft, her heart heavy with sorrow. Ages passed and the crown was forgotten. The only relic of Princess Elysia is a moss-covered statue in the town square, with Elysia's mournful likeness carved in stone, a princess without a crown. Last session, you all made your way to the heart of the forest to find the root-bound barrow a series of caverns underneath the great oak tree. You delved down below uh, and went through a series of tunnels where you met a, a cadre of rot goblins named Shazzy, Chazzy, and Jazzy. Uh, one of them is attempting to woo Sage at this very moment uh, as they are racing each other up above in the forest, uh, and the winner gets to marry Sage. You continued delving through this dungeon, going lower and lower uh, through several different uh, caverns and rooms uh, to find yourselves in Valisar's tomb. And as you step into the heart of this chamber, a hushed stillness envelops the air, the tingle of enchantment seeming to dance upon your breath. Every surface of this tomb is lined with twisted roots, all leading to the central throne where the massive knots of the ancient tree intertwine. Upon the throne, the sorcerer's body has become a parasitic part of the great tree's root system. Twisting branches weave in and out of his skeleton as centipedes scurry back and forth through the crevices of his form. Atop his ghastly skull, a delicate crown of cherry red wood sits knotted in the wispy roots where hair once grew you see his skull move up you see his eyes aglow with a dark energy and you hear you cannot have my crown and we are going into initiative uh the way initiative works is that you are rolling 
uh, your virtue uh, wits. Uh, I believe one of you has disadvantage on this. Uh, if you pass your wits, you go before the bad guys. If you fail, you go after. Uh, so who all has passed? The two. Just one? Melissa's still rolling? I got, I got a seven. Another, I passed. I got another natural 20, so that's a fail. Oh, Switch your dice! Switch your I, dice! I, I, I rolled away. three natural 20s in like four rolls of my tonight. It was great. That is terrible for this Playing game. the wrong game. Gotta get to yeah, gotta yeah, do yeah. it roll over. But I'm shout out to it. Norse Foundry for making some great dice. Just the wrong game. Pretty fantastic. All right. Uh, so, Kipster, it sounds like you're the only one going first. No. Well, what are you I doing? Also, I also passed. Also passed. Oh, I'm uh, sorry. Nope. Hold on. That way. Okay. Yeah. You said that. Uh, I, I have a great memory. Um, who Stay wants to go here. first? Go ahead, Kipster. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> I don't want your crown. Uh, how about your hands? Okay. Are you single? These roots start twisting and writhing and seeking you out as if to say, maybe he does want you. Oh, is this acceptance? And then they start trying to grapple you, uh, trying to pull you in uh, to uh, subdue you. It's a no. Oh. Also, I forgot I'm also befuddled, but uh, I'll, I'll deal with that next time. That's going to be my action. I wasn't I wasn't going to do anything. OK, uh, so Flora or Aster. I realize that I'm also befuddled looking back at my notes here, but I passed again, so I am going to go. <laughs> I rolled a 720. We did discuss being befuddled at the beginning of the stream, right? Yeah, Didn't we talk about this to you? <laughs> hey, man, I just I was there. I. I I heard that that uh, Rosabella was befuddled, yeah, but yeah, then yeah. I was looking, making sense of the little notes that oh I put. God, I'm like, oh, that's what that befuddled. meant. I'm oh also befuddled. <laughs> You're just as befuddled as I am, Master. I, I know, but I can do this. And so oh she's going to step to the side of Sage a bit, and she is going to do a blast, which is firing a five foot wide elemental blast in a straight line anywhere within stone's throw. Anything in its pass takes uh, dice some damage or half on a successful save. Okay. Uh, so he is going to attempt his save here. So uh, I think I'm does it say which stat? Like, oh, it's... never mind. It's just one save for monsters. My bad. Yeah, and then it's a gift dice roll, I believe. So it's some of the total rolled on the gift dice. Passes his save. Oh, okay. So I, I'm going to roll two gift dice for a total of eight, which means that you take four on a pass. All right. And remember, uh, doubles on gift dice is bad. Uh, and you can also lose gift dice if they all roll too high. Yeah, I rolled a six and a two. Uh, so the sixth likely will be gone. I'll have to look that up again. Uh, four, eight, five, you said? Sixes. Four, five, so it's sixes halved. Yep. Yeah. Oh, so it's a half of two? No, no. You get to do it now, but you can't roll it again in the future. Uh, you oh, lose so I lose gift that back. gift day. Oh, yes. got it. Okay. All right. So you were eight. doing eight halved is four. And you can tell this white has some sort of magical armor. You're still doing some damage, but it's decreased even more. Why is this not working? And then she'll kind of turn to the rest of the party. <laughs> uh, and that brings us to Flora. Well, Sugar, you you definitely have a, a, a way about you that is quite appealing to my friend Sage, but clearly you're, you're not of interest to princesses so i suppose we're gonna have to go our separate ways and so flora will attempt to jump up pulling out her pouch of pepper she's gonna try to force them down the throat of this guy uh to you no know, effect but she's not a fighter she's also not a lover so what do you think uh grace i'm sorry i only caught some of that is she's going to take her pouch of 
three peppers and try to shove them down this uh, being's throat. Okay, uh, so that sounds like an antic then. Um, with fighting uh, antics, uh, creatively using your surroundings or outsmarting your enemies, just as important as swinging your sword, uh, just requires a test of resolve, grace, or wits. Um, you're, it, I would say that counts as resolve because that's at hand attacks. Uh, that's a big old fail. As you start pushing uh, forward, these roots grow thicker and thicker, and you can see the the rosewood crown on the skull uh, begins to glow as these roots widen and actually uh, become stronger, and they just push you back so you can't reach close enough to get the attack in. Uh, and it is the white's turn now, uh, and he is going to cast a spell, uh, because this is fun. Uh, he lets out a low rumble or growl, and a dense fog begins to fill this room. Uh, he's casting fog. He's got two dice here. Uh, that's going to last for nine rounds as this room becomes so thick uh, that it's impossible to see the, so thick with fog that it's impossible to see anything except for the faint glow of that crown on his head. Uh, so, Rosabelle, I, I guess you're the only one that failed despite three people being befuddled. Uh, what would you like to do? Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god! Ah! So she's going to stress eat and she is going to scramble into her belongings, and she is just going to pull out uh, a piece of, let go of some coffee cake, uh, like you know, with a little bit of a filling. And she's just, oh, I'm, 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 I'm. and then you you all just see her, blah, 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 blah. She gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and for four what rounds, she is going to be double her size. So I'm double my height for four rounds. So I'm now like. I don't know. I like to think she was probably like six, five, you know, she's pretty big, pretty, pretty big, big. <laughs> she's like, <laughs> <laughs> no, she's, she's something like, I don't know. She's, she's over 10 feet tall now, uh, in her HP, uh, max HP doubled, uh, in her damage doubles. And then she's going to be, uh, like her voice will kind of get a little lower. And she's like, um, I'm like, Oh my God, give me that. Crown. And then she's going to start charging at <laughs> the glowing crown in the fog. And that'll be her turn. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and you're able to get closer. Uh, mm -hmm. you're not quite at hand because it's very difficult to see and to move through these roots, but you are very close to it. Uh, and you, as you get closer, you smell the rot and the dried death. It's this musty smell. It's vile. It's gross. Uh, it's just permeated everything in this room for centuries. Oh my god, that smells terrible. <laughs> it's, it's a really takes the flavor out of your coffee. <laughs> it's a uh, real layered bleach. voice, you know? It's a, there's <laughs> nuance. <laughs> All right, that brings us to the top of the round again. Uh, for uh, the two of you who are befuddled, let's have you roll initiative again uh, to see if you actually do get to go uh, okay. ahead here since you didn't roll with disadvantage. The first I double, I oh, rolled with did? disadvantage last time and I got the same number. I got a seven. Okay, first. okay, that's fair. Kip, and sir, I rolled an eight, so it's still below. Okay. Uh, so then whichever one of you wants to go first, uh, you all get to decide. Uh, well, um, I seeing as my uh, attempted romance has been cruelly rejected for absolutely no reason already. I haven't even gotten my foot in the door here. Um, Sage is going, oh, I'm sad now. And she'll bring out her trusty hatchet, which it does say that it chops wooden things really well. Do you think maybe that means I could have advantage on chopping something that's made out of wood? Yeah, I'd allow that. Okay, excellent. Um, then I am going to sort of run into the fog towards where I think this person is. Yeah, you can see the crown. Uh, okay. You can't see much else. The crown has okay. a glow that permeates the fog, 
but even the white underneath the crown is still very hard to see. Okay, then um, Sage is going to sort of roar into this fog, uh, which oddly enough, although it says roar, it means I can smell even the faintest trace of scents nearby, so I can follow them even if the crown drops. Um, it is a familiar scent you recognize. I presume that I've now scented them. Um, and the specific individual for however, how long they are present up to some hours. Uh, so let me roll. I'll roll only one gift dice to see how long I can smell them for. So I know where they are uh, for five hours. Uh, and I lost that okay. gift dice. Uh, so you can smell this dead guy for the next five hours. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he can't run away. And Is then this I'm your action? Go, yes, this is my action, um, and then I'm going into close range uh, with my hatchet for next round, following him with my nose. So we've like got two of you that have person. moved into close range then. Uh, Aster, Flora? So oh, I'm sorry, Aster... Flora moved into close range too. So Aster's the only one that's back. So Aster, because this was like a thick fog, you said, that kind of came up? Yes. And so <laughs> she being sort of the air person is i'm not spending gift dice on this because i already lost one the first time but she's just gonna kind of be like like trying to like get like a path where she can see again a little bit because she's gonna like pull pull her sword out and just like as she just goes running straight forward to where she last thinks she saw this thing she's just gonna be trying to like clear the fog a little bit ahead of her. Okay. Let's call this a wits test. Okay. Yee. That's a fail. All right. Uh, you are controlling the air as best you can, trying to blow a, a path, pushing the fog away, but it appears fog is still building it's still pouring out of this white so even when you push some of it out you clear it out uh, it just immediately gets replaced again she's just still like, <laughs> like manipulating here is all she knows how to do this isn't working all right uh and that takes us to flora oh i'm sorry aster did you move up or did you stay put yeah, I was running in with my sword. Okay, so you're I still moving that. in. Okay, so Flora, yeah. you are right there, very close. What are you doing? Flora pulls out her trusty screw, and she's going to try to jump up on this thing and take the corkscrew and start to tie the corkscrew through the side of its head and maybe let that crown right off. All right, uh, and that is resolve. Well, that's a 19, so that's our fail once again. Uh, you get your corkscrew up, uh, and you actually do make contact with the white, uh, but as you're pushing it in through the skull, a root comes up, and it just wraps around the corkscrew and starts pushing it back. So even as you're twisting, twisting, you're not able to get through the bone. Uh, it is the white's turn now. And it will target, uh, all four of you are up close now. It's targeting Aster. Can I make a case that the ten and a half foot tall Rosabella uh, might might be more likely to get attacked? Uh, yes. How about this? Uh, oh you my roll. my god. Wits <laughs> for me. Uh, and if you succeed... <laughs> Uh, no, I, I think grace would be more appropriate here uh, okay. for putting yourself in the way. Roll grace. If you succeed, uh, it'll target you instead. Yeah, I failed. Sorry. I tried. Okay. Uh, so it's still going for Aster. Uh, Aster, you need to roll grace uh, as it rises up. And you can't even hardly see this through the fog. Uh, but a sword slices through and arcs. And you just see the glint of it just as it's inches away from you. Uh, did you succeed? And is she still been standing there like, I rolled a four. And so the grid is the last second because she had her sword out. And she just succeeds to clean to the sword coming up and just sort of like knocks it away with her sword. 
<laughs> Fantastic. So you weren't even pre- defending, but it was just perfectly the right position uh, to block the white's attack. Uh, this this fight's going to take forever at this point. Uh, no one's doing any damage on either <laughs> side. <laughs> uh, Roosevelt, it's your turn. Uh, so Roosevelt, oh my god, I can't see. And then she's going to swing her battle axe, uh, butter knife, her giant butter knife down at uh, at this uh, thing that was holding the sword and swinging out at us and everything. The white, I think you called it. Yes, the white. Any any disadvantage or anything? I'm I'm not really sure. Uh, I I'm saying no because technically he doesn't have an ability that lets him see okay. in the dark either. So I'm just doing it for flavor. Okay. Uh, is equal good? Is it equal and under? Uh, equal is good. Yes. Okay. So I did. I rolled twelve. I needed a twelve. So that is a hit. Uh, as I bring my giant, my giant double bladed butter knife down like oh, you're gonna <laughs> die as she brings it down <laughs> all right roll your damage okay buddy well that's 10 so far uh 17 points of damage uh, you're joking right i'm not joking i so i used eat dr- eat me drink me and so my eat my small cake lets me double myself in height so uh for a number of rounds equal to four I have max HP and I double damage for the duration as well. I'm using a battle axe, which is normally D10, and I just rolled two D10 and I rolled a 10 and a seven. <laughs> so I say this fight's gonna go on One forever, shot. and you're just like, no, fuck you. <laughs> Done. Oh my god, we have to get Sage a prince. Yeah, he already rejected me. <laughs> Describe what? how you're killing this white. Even if it had full health, uh, you'd take it out with its armor. It has armor two, so it serious? subtracts two and HP twelve. So, uh, she's so got... a hit of fourteen or more would kill it at full health. And it was she's at ten just because it did get moving hit. like really slow because she's like a like a giant and she's screaming out loud like, "Where are you? Oh my! Come here!" And she's just. This giant butter knife battle axe. She keeps swinging down in the middle of the fog, and eventually she hits something. Oh my god, I think I hit it. Uh you you do. You cleave right through it. Uh the roots that are tangling around all of your legs uh, and grasping up, uh they immediately lose their strength. They uh start shriveling up and drying and retracting. Uh that glowing crown, you all see it topple over, land in the ground and roll until it comes to a stop and the fog slowly begins to dissipate. You find yourselves in this uh, now uh, empty tomb uh, with just a a bunch of shriveled up roots and an old skeleton. So Stephen, um, I surprisingly again forgot that I'm befuddled so you actually did get some damage off on me because when I roll at a disadvantage I actually failed so it'll make you feel better you can roll damage against uh, there you go Astor. retroactive you know <laughs> except <laughs> you're befuddled and you had to roll grace not wits yeah. oh oh well then I'm fine <laughs> I tried <laughs> we totally know how to play this game uh I should have gone over the rules at the beginning again. Uh, like this is only our job. second time playing. Yeah, you've done great. You, you <laughs> got a one shot on the I boss. Feel like I optimized my character pretty well. <laughs> Strangely enough, not something I'm good at. Good at usually. Yeah, uh, we randomly created these characters too, so exactly. uh, that works. Uh, so, what all are you doing now? This crown has rolled on the floor. Uh, Velisar is defeated and downed. What's the you point? did it? I couldn't see what was happening. I was, I couldn't clear the, I couldn't see it. What? I can't hear you up here. Can you come down now? Can you? How long are you big? Not for that long. And then she she shrinks down. It doesn't take very long. I only had four rounds. So she very quickly shrinks down. Like, oh my (laughs) God. Oh, it smells in here. Oh, can we leave now? Let's just take the crown and go. Uh, is, is no one, no one is here to romance. 
I, I don't I, think here is the best place to find romance. This doesn't look like the Do you best think the spot. goblins are done? I hope not. We don't <laughs> want to see them again <laughs> before we leave. Dear Heart, I expect they're going to be racing for quite a while, and, and uh, I am a certain sage that you can do at least a sw- midget bit better than a goblin. Uh, uh, tug, tugboat. Absolutely. Tugboat, I believe, is right up your alley. He is quite the dear, dear, simple, uh, ugly fool, but perfectly suited for any princess on the move. Uh, uh, okay, we'll go there. Um, should we uh, drop this crown off somewhere? Uh, Rosabella probably would look good on you. Oh, my God. Thank you so much. It's so very nice. Oh, my God. But yeah. I don't want to, no, I mean, someone else can have it. Like, it's okay. I don't, I don't need the crown. I'm just happy that. Should we just. You know, we, we succeeded. That's all. We did. Together. But mainly you. Totally mainly you. I mean, like, That's it was what... totally a team effort, you know? Like. It was. You know. I was, I was clearing the fog. It, was that what you were doing? I, I was, was wondering. I thought working. you were hyperventilating and panicking. Oh, my God. I was working on clearing the fog. I would have had it cleared. Well, it's gone. You did such a good job. Look at it. The fog is gone. Oh my god! It's all gone. Great job. It's all gone now. Do we do? Does anyone want to put it on their head, or do we just want to put it in a bag and then bring it back? Asked the I'm I'm fully supportive of you wearing that crown. You would look like oh the prima donna. a, a little concerned yeah. about what and it might... uh, Sage will grab the crown and stick it on Aster's head. <laughs> and Aster sort of looks around to see if anything feels <laughs> different. Is watching different. really carefully to <laughs> see if anything's changed. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Uh, yeah, it's just uh, like. Indiana Jones, where she starts aging in front of you, her hair grows. No, I'm kidding. Uh, yeah. Aster, with the fog dissipated, the crown no longer glows. The, the glow dies down. Uh, apparently, it only glows when it's dark or uh, when it's concealed. Uh, you wear it, and you feel a deep reverence for nature, uh, and you feel more connected to the roots and uh, the tree above you, but you don't necessarily feel more powerful or anything like that. Uh, it, it's something that you could definitely try to uh, discern and hone in on over time, but there are no immediate effects. Well, I think I'm okay. Uh, Why wouldn't you be? Well, because it was glowing when it was on their head. But normally I'm very connected to like the wind and the air. But now I also feel connected to like the trees and the roots. Which usually with us, it's one or the other or the other or the other. Oh, my God. Yeah, it's so... Isabella is going to start searching the crypt. <laughs> I can smell dead things for the next four hours. <laughs> That's the best use of the You can animal. smell one dead person. <laughs> one dead person. Sorry, five hours. I rolled a five. <laughs> you wasted a gift day, though. That. <laughs> it would have been more useful on the goblins. Uh, <laughs> Maybe. Uh Yes, yeah, so you start searching the tomb, and everything in here is uh, either old and rotted or ruined, uh, nothing of value. There's been so much uh, moisture uh, and dankness underneath here uh, that e- even you find a coin that's just been eroded beyond all mm. recognition. Uh, the crown was the real treasure. There is, however, a set of double doors uh, oh. on the other side of the tomb that might possibly lead to a way out. If you remember the way you came in, uh, there was a rope that led you down uh, about 30 some feet uh, and you broke that uh, and didn't bother tying off another one before jumping down. Uh, so you don't have a way to go back the way you came from. 
Okay. So she'll that call doesn't out. sound like us. <laughs> she'll call out the exit. Was it a rope or I could I could have sworn it was a snake that I then snake. skinned. What I of think them I was skinned snake. it. And I have, so, this, I have yeah, a snake meat. <laughs> There was a snake and then there was a rope. Okay. Uh, so to get under yeah. the tree, there was a snake that you skinned. Okay. Uh, and then from the goblin room, uh, there was a wooden board with a rope tied around mm -hmm. it uh, that you climbed down and then the board broke and the rope fell down with you. Okay. Um, Rosabella will like listen carefully at the door. She'll check it to see if like there's anything strange about it and then she'll open it up. Uh, give me a wits test. Uh, okay. And, and you're I'm still befuddled, befuddled until you yeah. take time. Okay. Uh, all right. Well, that's a pass on the first one, but a fail on the second. So that's a fail. Seems clear. Okay. I found a way out. Oh, my God. Come over here. And then she'll push it before you've been waiting for everybody because she's we... impatient. Oh, great. I'm Will leaving. Bye. <laughs> Floor's right behind her. <laughs> I'm coming. <laughs> you push these doors, and at first, they don't give. Uh, you think that they're locked. Uh, mm -hmm. You push a little harder. You realize there is some give, and you just really have to put some force into it. As you get some clearance, you realize that the other side of these doors were covered with these roots. Uh, and if the roots were still alive and still magically enchanted, there's no way you would have been able to get through these doors. But since you've killed wow. Balasar, uh, the roots have died and withered and dried. Uh, so as you push through them, they start crumbling to dust uh, as the door opens. Uh, and you find yourself in a long hallway. Uh, the roots in the vines pierce through the decaying mortar. Uh, this room is paved with crumbling stone. The roots all lead towards uh, a double door on the opposite end of the hallway. Uh, so it, it's kind of like a mirror image. And there's an elaborate mosaic that adorns uh, the wall. The scene depicts a dark, tangled shape uh, with branches radiating out. Uh, the shape is a shadowy, cloaked figure in the center of this landscape as buildings burn and people run in horror. And atop the shadowy figure's head is a piece of red stone carved into the shape of a crown. So, so it's like a it's like a mural, and then there's yes, like a uh, it it's a mosaic. So there's okay, mosaic. tons and tons of uh, tiles and stones that are inlaid in a way to give this image. Mm -hmm. And then there's one protruding stone where the crown would be on the shadowy figure. Does it look like a gem, or does it just look like a stone? Uh, it is, it, it is like a gem. Yes. Uh, okay. it's described as the red stone, but it, it definitely looks nicer than the rest. And it looks like okay. it could be popped out. Uh, okay. I mean, Rosabella is uh, not the best at that. She's like, oh my God, look at this. I wonder if this is worth anything. We might be able to put it I in the can, crown. Yeah, I'll get it out. But first, Rosabella, I am hungry. Let's pick oh, Okay. I can make you something. No problem. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. I, I've I like only had Aster's like really bad candy. <laughs> I like to think she has a picnic basket that's basically like what are those things called? Uh like the bags, the D and D. You know what they're called. You know what they're called. Bags of holding. Bag of holding. <laughs> <Bags of> holding. <laughs> it's like a picnic, a picnic basket of holding, and she just starts because pulling out various foods <laughs> and things. Uh sure. Yeah. Yay. She'll make, mm -hmm. and get, she'll get like a tea like tea settings and such, everything open out, and she'll have more of that little cake if that's okay. Absolutely. Uh, so you all uh, spread out on this stone and root covered floor, trying to find uh, just enough open space that you can sit down comfortably uh, and you start sharing uh, your food, which mm -hmm. allows you to picnic. Uh, and I believe when you're picnicking, uh, you get to uh, roll your heart dice to recover. Uh, spending time includes picnicking and resting. Uh, it's about 20 minutes or so is what it takes here. Uh, and then you can uh, roll your heart dice. Yes. So spending time and picnicking are the same thing or? Picnicking is a type of spending time. Yes. Okay. So then could I trigger, could I trigger my tea innate ability? So I always have, I always have the herbs for making tea in a pocket somewhere. Uh, it doesn't this take any inventory time, space. Yes. And when I spend time and brew a cup, I can read the leaves to divine the answer to a single yes or no question. 
Ooh. This is perfect for that. Yes. Okay. All right. So she'll be she'll be handing that out, and then when she's done drinking, she's going to look and try to divine the answer to a very important question. And the question is, will oh my god, will my friend Sage ever find love? I imagine you're saying this to the T, like doing the fortune teller, like uh, do you, little hand gestures. Do you understand how a teacup works? <laughs> they don't really fold much. The way you did it, I, I'm imagining the high school. <laughs> I was holding it up and looking at it. I was holding up and reading it. Anyways. Will your friend Sage ever find love? Mm -hmm. Yes, of course. Okay. And so, like, See, although Sage, then you're something fine. in the tea leaves say, but it may not be reciprocated. Oh, <laughs> wait a second. <laughs> yes. What, or what is the answer? What is it? What did they say? So is that a no? <laughs> like that's... Um, you're gonna find someone. You just have to be oh. patient. Oh, great! Is it? Is it? Is it tugboat? Like you said? Um, it doesn't really work like that. I can't like uh, divine the specific person it's gonna be, but I can just tell you with certainty, you're going okay. to find love. Oh, all right. So just keep at it, you know? Yeah. Just keep, keep putting every... yourself out there. Are, are you free? Me? I, yeah. I kind of want to keep my options open, you know? Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I'm more focused on my career right now, so. <laughs> Roosevelt oh. puts down the teacup. The camera pans over to it and shows the leaves have spelled out Definitely not tugboat. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Ouch. Oh, God. Uh, you Meanwhile, all. Aster has been like very much bringing up the rear as like anywhere that there's standing water or anything. She's just sort of like looking at her reflection with the crown on. So, like any surface that is in any way like within the mosaic, if there's something that's shiny, <laughs> like she's just, she is Aster of Daydream Gate. So she is a little like lost in this, like, oh, look at me. Lost in the, in the clouds. <laughs> little airheaded maybe. Uh, uh. Mm. No? I, no? I okay. see what you did there. See what uh, you did there. The crown is very beautiful. Uh, you you know the story. It belonged to a princess before, and it was corrupted by Valisar. So it was an item of good. Uh, and now that Valisar is gone, uh, you can tell that the the goodness is still there and can still be used. Uh, so you look gorgeous. And so she's just really just not really paying attention to what other things are going on. She's just sort of like looking in the mirror. And admiring the new pretty crown uh so just, anyone who wants to yeah. heal i know i didn't do much damage you can spend your heart dice now uh you roll the d4 uh and you can recover up to your maximum hp and recover from the befuddled um you also recover from befuddled by spending time um, since you have had food and water when you picnic, uh, you can spend any number of heart dice by rolling them and recovering heart points equal to their sum as well, if you'd like to try and recover heart points. Back to okay. three heart dice. And yeah, so in gift dice, it's yeah. only when we rest. It's not when we picnic, picnic. right? It's yes, like an I believe It's overnight so. long okay. rest thing. That's why I thought. Yeah, those are those are hard to get back. Oh, heart points and HP are the same thing. Why was I reading it like that? Uh, my bad. Uh, okay, so you have picnicked. You've recovered what you wanted to recover. Uh, you know that there are double doors on the other side of this room. Moving on. Uh, uh, okay, I'm going to climb up and pull the gem note of the mosaic. Okay. Uh, so you just recovered from Befuddled as well, right, Sage? Yeah. Okay, give me a wits test here. Okay. Um, Didn't sound confident in that, yeah. That, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that is Question. a five. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you succeed in not becoming Befuddled again uh, <laughs> as you grab this gem uh, and you are assaulted by dark magic. Uh, and it hurts. It, it hurts. It gives you awful 
uh, emotions and memories start flooding. <laughs> All the pain and the agony in this mosaic transfers to you, but you're able to distance yourself emotionally. Uh, you put up a mental shield, uh, and then the magic uh, dissipates, and you are no longer being assaulted by it. That's a bad gem. It hurts. I'm going to drop it now. Oh, Do you, like, I... wrap something around it or, like, put it in a bag, maybe? Uh, I don't have... I have a sad music box. I can try to scoop it in. That sounds perfect. Yeah, do that. <laughs> it's a sadness I, gem. It's says, a sad music box. Flora, oh, big, big Flora, Flora grabs her... Well, Flora grabs her well-loved teddy bear and unzips the back where you restuff oh. it. You can put it in the teddy bear. And then he'll, Flora will button the teddy bear's back back up. Perfect. And without actually having skin contact with it, uh, you are not assaulted by the dark magic. You're able to secure it in the teddy bear uh, and you now have the gem with you. You push towards the double doors on the other side of the hallway now. And again, uh, there's no give at first. But as you push, you hear the cracking uh, and the scraping of uh, wood on stone. Uh, and as you open up, you find that you're back in what looks to be cave. Uh, it doesn't appear to have the same mortar as the hallway in the tomb did. This hollow chamber is overgrown with a variety of mushrooms, large and small. There are shelf mushrooms that line the walls. Small round ones sprout from every crack. Giant spotted ones rise up like furniture. The smell is overwhelmingly musty and pungent. And you are pushing through and you are cracking and breaking a lot of these mushrooms that have overgrown these doors. You can tell no one has used these doors in a very, very long time. Can Rosabella, how, how long is spending time? Like what, what, what length of 15, 20 minutes. Okay. Um, can Rosabella spend a little time foraging through some of these mushrooms, seeing if anything is so sort of fancy or if anything's at the very least edible? Absolutely. Uh, there's no limit to how often you can spend time. Okay. Uh, I do roll to see if a danger would happen when you sure. spend time. Okay. Uh, so it's a little bit of a risk, but that's up to you. I would like to do that, but I'm okay if you all want to push on. Let's do it. Like I was going to oh suggest it. Mushrooms. You, oh, mm. mushroom soup. Knows where you might find ones like this anywhere Yep, that's else. right. Sure, who knows? Okay, I'm going to go over here and look. You look <laughs> over there. <laughs> oh, <ouch. laughs> so mean. Uh, is <laughs> everyone foraging for mushrooms or just Rosabelle? Uh, just Rosabelle. Flora asked her. No, sugar. Flora's just watching. She she doesn't she doesn't cotton pick no mushrooms right now. Okay. Uh so everyone takes some time uh, and chills while Rosabelle starts searching around the room. Uh Rosabelle, it's hard telling which ones are edible, which ones are poisonous. You immediately can tell that some of them are poisonous. Uh mm -hmm. you recognize a few of them. Uh, you can also tell that some are edible. Like mm -hmm. all mushrooms, they look very, very similar. You being a culinary expert, you can uh, decipher it, but it takes time, which is what you're doing now. Uh, okay. So you're going through and you're cutting a lot of them uh, by the stem and checking the gills and everything, making sure uh, that these are the correct mushrooms. Uh, and as you're going through, uh, a couple minutes later, you find a particularly dense uh, cluster of mushrooms uh, that look as if they've been destroyed a little bit. Like there have been little pieces of them that have been carved off, maybe chewed off, no carved off. It, it, it seems to be precise cuts. Huh. Well, that's curious. Like someone was here cutting the mushrooms up. That's weird. Oh. And then what? from that same cluster, you hear a tiny little voice. Hi. Oh my god, hi, hello, is that you? Hello, are you the one who's been cutting the mushrooms? Yeah. Why are you doing that? Oh, I eat them. Oh, okay, so these are edible? Well, they're edible for pixies. 
You're a pixie. I love the pixies. Oh my God. They're like my favorite band. And after you say you love pixies, you see a tiny little like fairy shadow. Uh, the skin or the, the body of this pixie uh, appears to be a little bit translucent uh, as if it exists in both the physical realm and some sort of nature dimension at the same time. Uh, so it really does appear to be like a 3D shadow with a little bit of a glow around it, especially where like wings might be that glows a little bit brighter. Hi, uh, and you see this, uh, it's like hand size. It, it's very, very tiny. Hi, Pixie. I'm Princess Rosabella. These are my friends, Princess Sage and Princess Flora Ow. and Princess Aster. Hi, 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 hi. Well, aren't you the most precious thing? I'm Bumblebark. Well, of course you are, Bumblebark. <clears throat> Hi. Hello. Hello. Are you trying to eat the mushrooms too? Well, I was, but I don't want to take them from you. Like, it's okay. I can find other mushrooms. Like, if you were eating these mushrooms, I don't want to take them from you. Oh, it's okay. I can share as long as you give me something. What would you like? Oh, I don't know. Maybe a gift or a song or oh, a game. I've got a music box that plays very uh, joyous music. Not Can I hear music. it? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll open Start up. Start playing this very sad music. And the brightness of the pixie dims before your eyes <laughs> uh, until it's just, th there's no more glow around it. There's no more wings. Uh, and the, the figure of it just kind of like droops a little bit as it like sits down in air. Uh, it is floating a little bit. That's really sad. Oh, sweet sage. You, you're going murder hobo on this poor little pixie. I, 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 I think you should shut that. Horrible uh, noise uh, off. Okay. Do you Let's have see. anything else? I've got some spiry peppers that you could add into your mushrooms and spice up your lunch. Perk you some, right up, sweetheart. I have some sweet candy. If it gets a little bit spicy, you can always uh, cool your mouth with a little candy. I like spicy candy. You know, and I have sweet some and sour like going on there. I have some like fresh underwear. So like after you eat the spicy food and it ruins what you're currently wearing, you can put on a fresh pair. Forgot you had the underwear. That's great. <laughs> I know. Yeah, so yeah. I. I was looking at my inventory to see what I had to give. I'm like, oh, that's right. I have this. Oh, that's great. I always wanted a hammock. Okay, sure. That works. It's a little hurtful, but that's fine. You pull out the underwear uh, and the pixie floats over and grabs one end of it and like strings it up uh, over a couple of these mushrooms. Mm -hmm. uh, and you see it just rocking uh, in the crotch like a hammock. Uh, Aster Flora, you give it a little pepper and sweet uh, and it starts chowing down. It's mixing them together. Uh, and uh, you can tell the, the glow is back. Uh, Bumblebark is energetic and happy again. Uh, and as you're spending time, uh, Bumblebark uh, points towards uh, the best mushrooms that Ooh. this room has to offer. Uh, so you get three helpful thimble caps, uh, which Ooh. are on page 101. Uh, they count as like a, a potion you eat or add them to tea for a boost of creative energy. It will end weariness and befuddlement and gives you an advantage on wits test for a day. Uh, one in six mushrooms cast a random spell when consumed. Very nice. And also, um, because this is mechanic of my forager ability, I also get to recover a spent gift die. So I'm going to go ahead and do that as well. Oh, that's nice. 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 Well, so where did you guys come from? Uh, we just killed the white that was down the hall yeah. there. We got a crown. Another yeah, one. I mean, where Princess has, so we have some already, yeah. but we got another one. There was a light one. down the hall? Yeah, like two doors down. Yeah. I didn't realize this neighborhood was so unsafe. 
Oh, sweetheart, you didn't even see the whole whole pack of goblins on the other side there, too. They're out racing about now, but they're quite feral little beasts. Of course, oh, one, I... may, one may be Marion and Sage, but that's, a, that's another story for another day. I saw them. I married one of them. Oh, my God, which oh. one? Yeah, me too. Daisy. Uh-oh. <laughs> I think uh -oh. I'm supposed to marry that one. I think he's cheating on you. Uh, dear heart, I think they call that a thruple these days. Oh, polyamory. Yes, I've heard of this. Did I get the name wrong or did you? I thought you were going to marry Chazzy. <laughs> oh, I I knew I was saying I, say. I was going to meet marry Chazzy. Um, but you did also say that one of them has already. Oh, Jazzy was already married. So Jazzy was already that. married. Yeah. 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 That's true. I'm playing it that Sage got them wrong, but yeah, it was. Okay. Okay. Uh... <laughs> yeah. Jazzy's great. Oh, so goblins are good uh, mates. Oh, yeah. Okay. He brings all sorts of fertilizer <laughs> whenever the spider's not here. Um, Fair enough. Spider, now, you did. I, I was about to say there. That's a. Are we talking a small pixie sized spider there? Oh no, it's a big one. Like well, that's big. all right because Rosabella here has got the ability to get quite big herself. I'm sure we'll be just fine. I get hungry sometimes. You wouldn't like me when I'm hungry. <laughs> oh, I'm sure you're nice enough. Oh, thank you. She's, That's so she, very nice. She oh, she always is. But would it be helpful to you if we got rid of the spider? Well, he doesn't eat pixies. Just princesses. The oh occasional goblin. Wait a second. But mostly the cicadas. Oh. Oh, that the cicadas. You that as you came down <laughs> into the root structure, you found a lot of cicadas were uh, embedded in the dirt in that initial cavern. Hmm. Can you uh, like? They were big. They were like mm -hmm. uh, the size of like a a skull. Can you uh -oh. like show us to the spider, like where the spider is? Like we can like clean it up for you. Oh, it's not hard to find. You just go down that tunnel right there, uh, and he points down uh one of the tunnels that uh lead out of this room. Flora's giving Rosabella side eye. Dear heart, are, are you sure we want to? Be, uh, running off to deal with giant spiders and all that. I mean, I mean do you know how that webbing is going to mess with our complexions? That is true. Like, the stickiness is just going to stay there like residue for days. You'll never be able to get it out of your hair. <sighs> that is right. We'll have to well, shave you can stay here just... if you want. Well, that's very kind, but there's only one hammock, so I don't think we can. Okay. I wasn't lonely. Well, you're married, I thought. I thought you and Jazzy are together and in love and such. Yeah, you found love. I want that, like, so bad. Oh, yeah, Jazzy brings me fertilizer. Only when the spider's gone, though. You know, uh, you're always welcome so to tag along with us. If we get true. rid of the spider, though... Then not only will other princesses be safe from the spider, then also um, Bumblebark can see Jazzy more because Jazzy wouldn't be afraid of the spider. So we'd be doing two good things. Isn't Jazzy and Jazzy all running through another cave with a bunch of spider webs in it right now? Uh... <laughs> I thought I thought we sent them to go run to the horizon and back, and so it was going to yeah, be. Yeah, the horizon was the other side of the cave because they didn't have a way to get out. So uh, I. So the spider's like really big. <laughs> the spider like eats other princesses. So I guess we probably should attack, go take care of it. We don't want other princesses to like get taken out. Well, all right then, dear. Let's at least pull our hair back and put it up, because I am not having... This took forever. I, I I don't think I can afford to go back and sit in a chair again for six hours to get this dude done again. So <laughs> I'm going to put it up while we go off to deal with no spider. I feel a little more connected to the Earth, so I don't know if that's going to do anything, but maybe. 
Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. That's definitely going to help. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Well, let's go. It will. A spider meat is supposed to be tasty, right? I mean, I don't know so much if it's like, you know, an entree, but it could be yeah. like a, a fun little, you know, like a mousse boost or something before. Like, hey. the main, you know. Rosabella can make anything tasty. Yeah. Yes, Let's cook Aster, spider. I can. That's true. Thank you. <laughs> so very kind. <laughs> <laughs> well, Let's go eat spider. If you come back, bring more spicy sweets, please. Um, okay. Yeah, we're probably not coming back. I mean, you could come. Oh. Like, yeah, you did not want to come with us. Do you have mushrooms? You, you just gave me some from your special stash. No, there's lots more here. Okay, well, there's mushrooms like all over the place. Lots of varieties of mushrooms. You ever had any like American magic? mushrooms? They are so good. They're amazing. Pinocchio mushrooms? Uh, no. Um, there's no P. Um, do, you want to ride, mushrooms. do you want to ride up here while we go? I guess I can try it for a bit. If I don't like it, I'll come back. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> And she'll like kind of, you know, like almost like a bird, like kind of like pick her up and like put her up like on the crown. Uh, and Bumblebark is now uh, sitting on your head. You can't feel the weight of them at all. Uh, they are just like a shadow essentially. Uh, but uh, the rest of you can see uh, Bumblebark is kind of like gripping onto two pieces of the crown and uh, riding Aster now. So now, in addition to Aster talking very breathily and slowly, she she's now walking very like carefully and slowly, very so that gracefully, she like interrupt the seeing of Bumblebark on her head. <laughs> Rosabella, dear, I I just want to tell you when when Sage and and Aster, you know, come of age and take over their kingdoms, I'm for sure gonna have. Uh, my kingdom invade them because they are slow and I am going to become an empress. <laughs> I think that is definitely a great idea. A hundred percent. Um let's plan for that. I can help you. I, I don't really have any interest in like idea. leading, you know, but I like to, you know, I like to be near power. So it's wonderful. We'll have to we'll definitely have to put a pin in that until a little bit later. Sounds like a good As idea. As you start moving Aster, through I feel dark like tunnels. terrible things are happening and I don't know why. <laughs> We're up conspiring. It's just like <laughs> right. <laughs> you're you're just you're just worried about tugboat. Yeah. But don't worry. Okay, we're gonna, okay. That's we're going to we're going to fight the spider. Yeah. And then we're going to get out of here. I and, find true love and marry. And we'll live happily ever after. Yeah. Okay. As you start moving through the dark tunnel, uh, lined with the, uh, it becomes thicker and thicker with these sticky spider webs. Uh, to get through them without getting stuck will require grace tests. Can I do my blast and just try to like shoot air real hard ahead of us to like disrupt them? Uh, yes. However, from a uh, basic knowledge of spiders that you would have. Uh, generally, when something disrupts a web, it attracts the spider. That's okay, because we want to fight it anyway. Like, so. yeah, would we okay. want to fight it here before we get too far in? We good? Okay. Uh, so with Aster doing that, everyone can have advantage on this grace test. I actually passed a test. Mm -hmm. I was going I to fail. The advantage gave me a pass. Me yeah, too. me too. <laughs> all right. Uh, you are all making it through without Failed. being Sorry. failed. So Aster was the one. Advantage? Advantage. Sorry. Sorry, I'm good. 
<laughs> okay. I don't know why this is so funny to me. It is. Uh, you start moving through these web tunnels, um, getting the webs out of the way as best you can. All of you avoid being ensnared in them, which is difficult. Uh, these webs are extremely sticky and they're a lot thicker than normal spider webs. Um, and then you hear the click, 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 rapid fire of eight large chitinous legs tapping along these cavernous walls. I want everyone to roll initiative at disadvantage here uh, because you alerted the spider he's coming in fast. So that is wits at disadvantage. Failed by one. Failed as well. Failed with a 20. Ooh. Failed with a 19. Ooh, ooh. So the spider is coming in first. Uh, and Aster, I'm going to pick on you because you were the one uh, that was blowing on these webs. It makes sense that you'd be in the front there. That's an uh, excellent choice. <laughs> <laughs> makes sense. <laughs> Me and my slow walking in front. <laughs> uh, so uh, this thing can shoot a blast of webs as an action. Uh, so go ahead and test grace for me as it starts spraying web at you. That is a fail. Okay. Uh, you are caught, uh, until you are released. Uh, so someone has to take an action to get you out of that web, uh, or you can try to struggle through it yourself at disadvantage. Uh, that is the spider's turn. Uh, you well, will we all found go. it. Well, we found it. <laughs> and that last word gets cut off as Webb covers her face uh, and presses her up against the wall. Do you think they'll marry me? Well, so yeah. a, you, you might as well give it a uh, ask yeah. the spider. That may be yeah. a chance. Uh. This spider is massive. It, it's larger than a bull uh, and it is filling up one end of this tunnel barreling down on you. It, it sprayed this web, but it's continuing to move forward. Uh, a spider person, a creature, actually. Are you interested in romance? <laughs> I'm going to take a free attack on you here. Give me okay, a grace. Fair. <laughs> fair. Oh, gloves fair. are off. Gloves are off. Yeah. Uh, that is a fail. All right, it is attempting to bite you, or yeah. it is biting you, uh, for five damage. Can um, I, and you suffer the venom curse. Uh, I can don't I armor, use, so it's only three. Can I okay. use my defend uh, special ability as a reaction to roll a couple of heart dice and try to block it with my frying pan? Absolutely, absolutely. All right. Oh. Ten in total. I lost two heart dice. Got a five and a five. But, uh, uh, is it heart dice or is it gift dice that you're supposed to roll? Gift dice. Gift dice. Sorry. Sorry. And I believe you only have one of those left, right? No, I've got two. Okay. Because you gave us three. I mean, you gave us another one at the beginning of the session. Uh, okay, three. Three. Uh, so? so you're blocking three of that damage. Mm hmm. And she is blocking two of that damage. So between your frying pan and her armor, uh, the spider is not able to damage her. You do not suffer the venom curse. I don't think it's interested in romance. No, no, sweetheart. I, 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 I'm a fair certain that I, I've never met a spider that was interested in romance in a princess. Oh, huh. Conversation is happening as the the pincers and the teeth are like. Fighting down on Sage. The frying pan is going up and down. Aster is pinned to a wall. Uh, so Flora, Aster, Rosabelle. Uh, uh, okay. I can try to get out of this, right? It'll be disadvantage if you're trying to get out yourself. Uh, I'll wait for everybody else to go. Oh, okay. Well, then I guess, I mean, Rosabella can go. Uh, and definitely not help Aster. Uh, instead, she's going to <laughs> dig <laughs> into her her, her um, like seeing seeing the like the fangs 
like about to go in the stage and like inject her with venom and stuff. It's like, oh, well, two can play at that game. And she's going to reach into her hand, uh, into her bag, and she's going to pull out a concoction. Uh, and then she is going to, um, she's going to throw it as an attack. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and. It is grace to attack at ranged. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, okay. It's this is uh, the same stat for uh, melee and for range. All right, seven under twelve. That's a success. Um, okay, I'm going to commit two my two gift dice. So it's going to do. So basically, I'm throwing vitriol on it. So it's some kind of acid I'm throwing on top of it. Uh, is this spider made out of metal? It is not. No. I just want. I just want because it was. I you know. I didn't think so. I just you know. Okay. <laughs> just asking, uh, just in case. Okay, uh, so there's good news and bad news. Um, seven points of damage immediately. Uh, and then it'll take two damage each round until it's washed off. And okay, I, lose one of my, that's a, I lose one of my gift dice. Uh, you can see that the hard, uh, chitinous body of the spider... Uh, the acid does a lot of damage and it immediately starts burning through and it, it does open a small hole in the armor. You can tell it's still burning. That was a big hit on the spider. Nice. Get off my friend. You're so, ugh, gosh. Yeah, definitely not interested anymore. Thank you. <laughs> the casualness of this crew in mortal danger. Are we? Flora or Aster? <laughs> Flora goes over to Aster. She's like, Sweetheart, I told you. I said, look, your hair is never going to recover from this. Oh, dear heart. Starts pulling, trying to pull the webbing away. All right, so that is a resolve for you then. This is, uh, is going to be bad, guys. My resolve is eight. Oh, I should have done that then. Got a 20, so that's a failure. <laughs> All right. Does that mean you make uh, it so tighter? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. wrapping her intentionally just Push, her. pushing it up her nostrils oh <laughs> dear heart I'll take very good care of your kingdom hold on let me just see if I can <laughs> suffocate you <laughs> just like while wow, you're occupied let me just grab the crown off of your head yeah you don't need this oh god yeah uh, what so happened with the 20... to, to, to bumble bark is he also oh. caught up in that uh... good question we haven't found out yet mm -hmm. uh Flora, uh, with the 20, you're not going to be able to free Aster, but I will say that you are making an impact. Uh, you're pulling off some of this web. A lot of it's getting stuck to your own hands, but you're making it easier on Aster to free herself. If she takes the action to try and free herself, it will not be at disadvantage. Uh, and Aster, I think it's your turn. And is that resolve to free myself? Yes, resolve. All right, so I'm trying to roll under 13, and I rolled a 20. <laughs> All, We're getting a I'm lot of net twenties in this game. I'm rolling lollies all over the place, and that is not what I want to see. Shout out North Foundry. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so Aster, uh, you are not able to get free. Uh, you do feel a tugging in your hair, as if there's a tiny creature kicking you. Oh, oh. Mm, 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 mm. And she's uh, we are <laughs> going to like look up at the top of the round. Uh, so I believe the spider is taking more damage here from the acid, right? Yes, we'll take two points of damage each round until washed off. Okay, uh, it's not going to be able to wash itself off. I am still going to apply its armor there, so it's going to put it down to one damage. Um, and it will attempt to continue biting. Uh, I think it makes sense that it would keep biting at Sage. It's not that yeah. smart to change targets. Uh, so Grace to dodge this. Wow, these uh, spiders are very intelligent. This dice has betrayed me, so I'm going to use this dice. <sighs> this dice has betrayed me. I will use a different one next time. <laughs> All right. Uh, that is, ooh, a lolly. Uh, that is eight damage coming down oh, on Sage right now. That would be, uh, oh, so that's only six, but that is uh, a lot of damage for me. I have one hit point left. Uh, were you going to do your reaction, Flora? I can't. I don't have any uh, gift dice left. Okay, I will use mine then. Um, I'm going to use my bubble as a reaction. So I can cast this as a reaction. It's a magical bubble of protection. Surrounds a creature you can see. and increases their armor value by 
dice. So by one for two rounds, but something. So okay, that's one more. Uh, so basically. that two hit points means you're left at two HP hard points. Yes, right. Yes. All right, and that is the spider's turn. Uh, it's up to you. What order you'd like to go in? Okay, I'm just gonna. This is really not working. I'm gonna pull up its mandibles and try to like chop through its uh, mouth area with my hatchet, um, which would be a resolve. Uh, yes, for right hand. I think this dice. All right, uh, that is seven under thirteen. Uh, so that is a hit, and I do a d6 of damage, which is a six. Six damage. Ah! This thing? Sorry? Sorry. I was screaming. What did you say? How are you killing the spider? <laughs> uh, probably just like the nonstop hatchet until I cut through between the jaw and the top of the head of a spider. I guess it's still considered a head. Uh, and just, like, ripping it off with my hand on its mandibles as I go, okay, I've kept the body for cooking. And bug brains are spraying everywhere uh, as the acid continues to slowly burn through the shell. Uh, The the spider crumples, the legs have, like, that wriggling, and then they curl up tight uh, as it loses its life. Uh, Aster is still pinned to a wall. I'll get her out. <laughs> Spider head in one hand, hatchet in the other. <laughs> there I go. Okay. Flora just walks back. She's like, that's absolutely dear. You just, yeah. uh, sorry about this, Asta. I'm sure we'll attend. <laughs> the funeral will be glorious. <laughs> uh, we'll say that it doesn't require a check because you're no longer uh, under threat anymore. Uh, so <laughs> say just, the first just thing chopping, you see. chopping, chopping, chopping. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> Hopefully Aster doesn't lose any fingers. Uh, you get free of the web uh, and you hear, that wasn't fun. I'm very sorry. I envisioned that differently in my mind, but we still took care of the spider for you. Yeah, I'm going to go back to my hammock now. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, and you see a tiny glowing shadow uh, begin to fly off down the tunnels that uh, you came from. Best you... of luck to you and Jazzy. <laughs> Thank you. Echoing um, down the tunnel. Uh, Steven, are there any like cocoons or anything in here? Because like we did hear that they apparently ate princesses and things. So as you start searching through uh these spidery tunnels uh we don't need to test to see if you'll get stuck anymore because the spider's dead you can take your time uh you do find uh that there is a desiccated uh body uh it's just leathery skin and bones now uh it it wasn't in a cocoon but it was definitely devoured by the the spider you can see that there are puncture wounds on it from where it uh sucked out all the fun stuff Mm -hmm. uh it appears to be some sort of adventurer. Uh, there's a rotting backpack. You uh, can go through it. You find a rusty pickaxe, a lantern, uh, two flasks of oil, uh, mm. as well as a tattered piece of parchment with a strange form of writing. Oh. Um, is, is, are any of us particularly good at letters? Definitely not uh, Sage. Astra? Astra oh. has a writing kit, so I would okay. think if you travel with a writing kit, you probably know something. So Rosabella will pick it up and we'll go. <sighs> Aster, um, can you take a look at this and see if this is important? Maybe there's something interesting here. Of course, Rosabella. This cool, is cool, cool. Thanks. lovely paper. I'm so glad that you would trust me with this. Right. Yep. Mm-hmm. Can you... Um, I need a little bit of backlight. Could you just hold your yeah, right, right there, right? Oh, that's so helpful. Thank you, thank you. That's so perfect. Right, right there. 
Rosabella so, am I rolling something to see if I can uh, bladed butter knife? <laughs> <laughs> Aster, do you have a talent uh, that would be helping you here, or are you just going off your equipment list? I'm just going off equipment list. Um, okay, I uh, I can speak if you had something like elements, ling- but I don't have anything else. So if you had like linguistics or folklore, it would uh, allow you to decipher it without a test uh, because you have. Uh, your equipment that you're using to help. Uh, we're going to call this a wits test with advantage. All right, What's so I'm aiming for an Thank you eight. to Entropy Emporium for the raid. Thank you very much. Playing some princes, uh, perils and princesses tonight. Yeah, yeah. Steven's welcome trying to kill in, us. Welcome in. It's not working. It's just, he's not doing it. Um, he's trying so hard. So Aster is like, no, Rosabella, you're you're moving no i mm, i i thought i had it i it's right on oh it's gone i failed the roll even with advantage i failed i needed under a, oh, an no. eight and i didn't roll anything lower than a nine so, so uh with the failure then uh you aren't able to decipher anything usable right now uh you can continue studying and spending time uh, to try and figure it out, but you get nothing immediately. Are, is it one roll per group, or are we also allowed to roll? I think there was a rule for it, and I just don't remember. Uh, I don't know if there is a rule for it. I would say if you want to roll, it, it's likely that you would have been helping to assist in the first place. Uh, so I, I would allow you to roll again, but at disadvantage. Okay, maybe it's animal speak. I'll, uh, I'm just going to take a look real quick. For animal language. It's, it's okay. an animal I, language. I don't I think you're going to get three. it. I couldn't, I couldn't get it. I don't know that you're going I, to. I rolled oh. a one. And I, I, I think it's animal scripture. Oh. I talk to animals. Yay. You figured it out. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you're Aster. so smart sage oh my god <laughs> i always say it to flora like you're the smartest of us and oh, here we are <gasps> so you, sage Roosevelt. starts reading off this uh parchment that reads my observations have revealed that the crown of princess elysia bestows upon the wearer a unique connection to the very depths of the forest if a skilled conjurer were able to find an appropriate well of sylvan magic, such as the base of a great oak, they might very well be able to use the crown's magic to tap directly into the forest and bend it to their will. And then there is a magic keyword at the bottom. Uh, so Sage will go, ah, okay, so uh, if it's a magic item with the, you need a sylvan well, which is like a great oak to bend the forest in your will. And then there's a magic word at the bottom. Uh, Aster, maybe you should say the word. This is the lettering. Shouldn't I wait to say the word until I'm at the base of an oak? You've been under one for a while. Yeah, we're under one right now. That's the whole root system above us. Uh, the yeah. intellect, the intellect, like <laughs> power rankings in this it's party have really changed. Wits. It was. <laughs> I have ten wits. It was I'm not that well, good, actually. <laughs> yeah. Wits is my second highest. My wits is thirteen. It's it's only Ooh. relatively high score I've got. I also have thirteen as well. Yeah, yeah. Resolve is my Aster big really one. really is the uh, least <laughs> intelligent person in the group. <laughs> Rosabella oh, is no. not surprised. <laughs> <laughs> so so sage, right? Uh, yeah, so we're in an oak. Got yeah, can you it. smell so it? I've been smelling this like so much recently. So what's the word I'm supposed to say? Uh, it, it, this lettering, uh, Stephen. Uh, yeah, I, I, it's a magic word. Uh, you can read it uh, and pronounce it to the best of your ability. It's oogity boogity. Abracadabra. Buga. Oogity boogity. Buga. De- Buga. You keep interrupting me. Just uh, I got it. <laughs> let me do it. Just let me do it. Booga da boo gadi. 
And when you finally finish it, the crown begins to glow, uh, that same soft pinkish glow that it had before. Uh, and you are uh, initially overwhelmed uh, with ancient memories of the oak above you. Uh, as it begins to subside, uh, you can know that you can once a day get advantage on a wits check, drawing on the knowledge of the forest, which you need seems it. pretty helpful for you. Feel like I just got smarter. Dear heart, is that much of a climb up the ladder for you, though, in all truth? I know things now. Like maybe once a day, I'll know something more. <laughs> Do and then tomorrow, know? I'll know something more too. Rosabella asked her a basic, like like some sort of some sort of basic quiz question to see if Aster knows the answer to it. How many? Uh, Rosabella pints? asked you, "What's two plus two? Oh, there you go. I was gonna say how many pints in a gallon, but that works. Roll it wits test. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to use it for advantage? <laughs> <laughs> so sorry. Well, yeah, I saw you use the screen for advantage. Okay. Yeah. So as she's thinking, she says oogity boogity. <laughs> it gets advantage. God. Don't leave me up to making up the magic words. <laughs> I still can't roll under a nine and my wits is still an eight. Oh my god. <laughs> so what do you say? Two plus two is oh no. <laughs> So there's there's two and there's two. Yup. And that's like three. The letter, the letter P. What? <laughs> letter P. <laughs> right. I mean, it's yeah. You're you've definitely gotten smarter. It would have taken you a half an I hour just, to get there. So that's good. Yay. I I feel. The wisdom of all of the years of the trees okay, is in so, here somewhere. I'm not uh -huh. sure I can find it just yet, but it's in there now. Sure. Sweet. You just let us know when you find it. <laughs> <laughs> you, got, you got nothing to worry about this. We, a couple of years from now, I'm going to draw up some Regency paperwork. You'll just have to sign at the bottom there. Everything will be just fine. She'll fail the roll of a <laughs> no, you're just gonna take it out with your office. Okay, you don't okay. even have to start a war. Don't even Everyone, in Aster's defense, over. just get to the side something. In Aster's yeah. defense, trees are very bad at math. Okay, like that's not their strong suit. They don't do math on a daily basis. <laughs> the tree, the wisdom of the trees, did not help in the counting. Mm. So, are we done here now? I mean, you, it looks like it. Make your way through the rest of the spider lair. Uh, and then you find yourselves in uh, the root cavern that you entered, full of the giant cicadas and the insect husks. And there are roots uh, that twist and entwine around the earth, allowing you to climb up uh, difficultly, but it, it is possible. I'm not going to ask for a roll here because uh, you have the time. There's no more danger. You've cleared out everything. Uh, you make it out, and it is just now starting to become dark. Uh, you still have a few hours of light uh, to go and find a suitable campsite, and you begin heading back to the village of Willowbrook. As you are just uh, thinking that you're about out of time, that you need to find a site soon, otherwise it'll be too dark to make camp, you hear a voice calling out through the woods. Have at thee, unguard, foul demons! And then in response, you hear, Hey, Chazzy! That's gonna be a great wedding feast! <laughs> oh! My, my goblin bethrows are still running up here! Something like that, yeah. There's another voice, though. He sounded <sighs> clean. <laughs> <laughs> you start heading towards the noise, uh, and you find a man, a uh, maybe not handsome man, but a man uh, hanging from a rope trap. Uh, and beneath him are your three goblin friends, uh, Shazzy, Chazzy, and Jazzy. Shazzy, of course, being the only one uh, with clothing, with a, a shirt on, uh, and all three of them have their uh, 
pointed sticks and they are jabbing at this man, uh, poking him. It doesn't appear that they're doing serious damage right now, uh, but they're definitely uh, irritating him. And he has a uh, rather short sword that he is swinging uh, pretty uselessly trying to deflect their sticks because he's spinning around with the movements of his arm. I think so the goblins are still the better choice. Jazzy, Jazzy, dear hearts, what, you, you need to lay off this young fella here and, and uh, go back about your race. You got uh, miles and miles yet to go. Oh, hey, it's the princesses. Chazzy Hi. won the race. Well, Chazzy, congratulations there. I'm sure Sage will be very impressed by your athletic prowess. And we got dinner. And he goes and now, jabs now, now, at now, the now, man Now, again. son, now. We're not going to be jabbing at no fellas like that. And I'm going to use my innate abilities of fast friends to have advantage on any uh, any test to negotiate a truce. Ooh. All right. Uh, so what kind of truce are you negotiating here? Uh, now, you get advantage on it. It's going to be wits. Uh, but what are you trying to get out of this? Now, Chazzy and Jazzy, dears, uh, we left a giant spider carcass back there for you to make a fine dinner out of with your little pixie uh, betrothed. Uh, and he's there waiting on you. And that spider is just as ripe as can be with a little bit of mushrooms. We left some hot peppers back there as well. Your meals are going to get cold if you don't get back down there into those caves and take care of that. We'll, we'll, we'll settle up with this fine, fine young fella here while you're about your business. Uh, yeah, that's a great argument. Uh, go ahead and give me the wits test. All right. Wits is 13. Got a pretty good chance. Got a one and a five. Actually did okay this time. Oh, I am pretty hungry. Jazzy, you mind waiting until tomorrow to get married? Uh, Chazzy and Jazzy really haven't said much at all. Chazzy is the one that talks. Uh, and Chazzy uh, just picks his nose again, eats it. Yeah, he's hungry too. All right, we'll meet you at the cavern tomorrow. Don't be late. Uh, as Shazzy points towards Sage. Okay. Laura, that was really impressive. Are you single? Sweetheart. Yeah. That, that, there's going to come a time when I'm ruling your kingdom. Uh, yeah. we'll, be, we'll be fast friends, but we will not be dating or romantically involved. Oh. Are you, I, I, can, I can kill people for you, though. Absolutely. You will definitely be my chief princess executioner uh, and the terror of the kingdom. That will be your title, terror of the kingdom. Oh, that's nice. Uh, uh, perhaps someone could let me down. Um, What's your name? My name is Prince Pont of Oon. Oh, OK. Are you single? Yeah. Oh, I absolutely am. In fact, I am on a quest to save a princess and then, of course, to fall in love with her and mm -hmm, then to return mm -hmm, her to mm -hmm. my home uh, great, so that great. I can then murder my father, ascend to the throne and make her my queen. And we rule together with iron fists of love. That sounds great. Rosabella pushes Sage over. Oh, my God. She fell. She needs saving. Ow, ow, ow. <laughs> uh, I, I could save her. Uh, perhaps someone could let me down first and he gestures to the rope that's like got him hanging above the ground absolutely Esther will pull sweetheart. out her sword um and she's gonna like swing at the rope over his head uh, you swing at the over his head that that's pretty high up but there is a tree that it's connected to nearby that you can swing at <gasps> she'll first try to swing over his head and then realize like she's on tippy toes <laughs> and it's just not decapitate him. damn it <laughs> so, yeah. no, she she those out. witch rolls coming back again <laughs> <laughs> oh, if only we'd save that advantage on wits uh, <laughs> so you get him down uh, after a couple near misses uh, he lands with a thump uh, stands up, brushes himself off. He's a very wide man, not necessarily fat, uh, but mm. very broad, uh, relatively thin. Uh, looks like he would float down a river very well. Uh, and uh, he seems nice enough. Uh, and then, Sage, are you still on the ground after this? Ow! Ow! Pretend like you're choking or something. Pretend oh, like you're choking. Oh, oh, oh. 
Oh, oh no, someone give her mouth to mouth or something or whatever. <laughs> a princess in in dire distress and peril. I will save you. Uh, uh, he moves over to you, Sage. I want a grace check here. Uh oh. Oh, this is my worst one. Um, <laughs> As it should be. I'm going to give yeah. her a hard die. I'm going to give her one of my hard die. I rolled a six. Uh, so you can wait till she. Me. Okay, yeah. Oh, okay. Hard wait die. After. All right, never mind. Six. Uh, I have a past. He goes and he goes to pick you up and can't lift you. Uh, ah. he, he's not strong enough. Um, but you're able to, like, make it seem as if he's saving you and lifting you up as you uh, assist him uh, and he gets you on his feet uh, and he uh, bows before you. Ah. Princess, I am yeah. Prince Haunt of Oon. I'm, I'm Sa Princess Sage of Crescent Crossing. I'm, I'm looking for love. Oh, you look nice. Uh, you weren't quite what I expected. From a oh. princess. Uh, uh, I can, what, uh, well, uh, what and were Aster's you Aster's just going to come over and she's just going to like kind of hit him in the side with the backside of the sword. And Ow. she's just going to look over to Sage. Sage? Yeah. If you like someone. Yeah. And they like you back too. Then you found what you're looking for. He's a bit weak, isn't he? He got captured by goblins. I was not captured. I was fighting to rescue you four princesses. And Aster's just sort of standing behind him and looking towards Sage. It is just kind of like. No, no. Okay, yeah. Uh, thank you. I'll try again later. Oh, good. I, I, I mean. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. Uh, you know, perhaps uh, I could set you up with my brother. Is he stronger than you? Uh, well, his name is Buff. Prince okay. Buff Baboon. Aster's Aster's standing behind him and she's just gonna like give him a kick in the back. <laughs> what she it's, might like him as long as she's not bothered by the squeaking noises his nose and shoes make. You know, it it is a very big world. Yeah. And you will find someone who loves you, Mr. Toon. But Oon. I don't. I'm sorry. Oon. Mr. O O N. Well, Oon. Oon. And she's Oon. just like, oh, uh, 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 okay. Um, bye. Bye. Yeah. Have you find what you're looking for? Wait, are you, are you four princesses not in peril? I can save the rest of you. We're, do we look like we're in peril? You looked I, like you were a prince in peril. I and got we, or princesses, saved you. Well, I don't want a spider head, I, I will admit. Uh, however, I was braving peril. I was not in peril. Are you still talking? And she just looks to everybody else. Is he still here? Uh, Is he yeah. still talking? It's real bad if Astra doesn't even like you, honestly. She's the nicest one. Are you still talking? I hear that quote from my wife at least twice a day. Uh, <laughs> so the four princesses have decided they have had enough of Prince Pont of Oon and leave him in the forest uh, as he goes and finds more goblins to slay in his quest. Uh, you find a place to camp for the night, you travel for the next few days, and you make it back to Willowbrook, where uh, Princess Alicia's statue has changed. The overgrown vines on her statue uh, have grown back a little bit. Uh, they have uh, seem trimmed more than anything. They're still there, but it, there's a lot more 
uh, open space to the statue, and it seems more decorative rather than overgrowing the statue. And her face, you remember, is being very, very somber and solemn. Uh, now uh, seems to have a slight smile and a bit of a brightness to it. Uh, the villagers uh, are a little skeptical that that is the crown of Elysia. It's been gone for so long, and they don't really understand uh, what it what the repercussions are of it being returned. But uh, the village has been safer than ever as the dark woods that had been encroaching on the borders uh, are brighter and brighter. The monsters inside are less fierce. Uh, and the village has uh, started to begin its happily ever after. Uh, before we wrap up, Let's ask each of you, what does happily ever after look like for your princess? Uh, so let's start. Uh, we'll do the same order as before the reverse counterclockwise, starting with Rosabelle. Oh, my God. So Rosabella, um, she she's very, like I said, career oriented. Um, so she essentially creates like a amazing, like franchise food empire across all of these different kingdoms. Um, and she has all these various princesses and princes and goblins and whatnot working under her. And she branches out into more things than just food and starts doing things like, Oh, I don't know, like furniture and various other like 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 housekeeping type products and things, and just becomes like um, ridiculously uber wealthy, even more so than like her kingdom would allow, and incredibly powerful in the eyes of popular culture. And she's just a major influencer, and she stays single the whole time because she don't need to get tied down. Uh, and likely, your kingdom ends up uh, encroaching the borders of Un. Um, where uh, it has not found decent rulership to defend itself. Well, that's a shame. I'm just going to have to, like, you know, influence who actually takes over. Like, again, Rosabella doesn't really want to do, like, the forward-facing governmental gig because there's just no money in that. So, like, she prefers private industry. So she's just going to make sure she gets whoever it is that she deems to be a proper wise ruler. And so who better than her, her dear friend Flora to kind of just like take over because Flora wants that. So right on. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, and Aster, what does happily ever after look like for you? So I feel like when it gets around to Flora, we can see if, if Flora's okay with how things are going. Cause Aster um, is going to spend all kinds of time in the woods and in oak trees because now she's it, you know the thing that does the thing and she's uh feels so much smarter doing that um but the elemental connection when they level up they can do like summon and have like all of these little like elemental beings and so she basically spends her time in the woods with this whole like cadre of little like air spirits um that she just really has also no particular interest in doing things. And so she's just like out in the woods all of the time, just having fun with all of her little sprite friends, her little air elemental folks. Um, she can also from time to time, if any of her princess friends need anything, she can also do storms. So she can basically do like tornadoes. So if anyone from or other places um, decides that they want to be uh, a, a little bit um, encroachy, um, then there might just be these tornadoes that just come and wreck havoc in places where havoc might need to be wrecked. And if Flora will have it, Flora <laughs> can rule as Flora sees fit because Astro just wants to spend her time in the woods hanging out with her little uh, air spirits. Uh, and possibly a pixie or two named Bumblebark. Absolutely, if if Bumblebark um, wants to spend some time, um, I suppose Jazzy can come too. If that's really what's important to Bumblebark, that will be fine. It appears that Bumblebark is the social butterfly, and Jazzy is the antisocial one. So Bumblebark normally comes out alone. 
Jazzy has probably been uh, taken by Rosabella's uh, content farms. <laughs> uh, awesome. Uh, and Flora, uh, it sounds like you've got a lot of opportunity here. What's your happily ever after look like? So Florida, Flora uh, took the dark gem out of the teddy bear, put her frying pan away, mastered the dark arts, accepted the regency of Crescent Cross and and Daydream and became an empress uh, using Rosabella's incredible financial acumen to build up the kind of financial foundation that an empire needs as we slowly turn our gaze on Un in the hopes of... Uh, putting uh, Ponce on a stake because nobody asked, but Flora's last name is Tepish. Flora Lee Impaler. Uh, <laughs> uh, yes, so uh, Pont, uh was put on a stake uh, and his brother Buff uh, was installed uh, as a figurehead uh, under Flora's empire. Uh, Sage, what does your happily ever after look like? Yeah, so um, Sage eventually meets uh, a couple of werewolf packs and a werewolf prince, and uh, you know what? Rules of Forest Kingdom, because, uh, you know, Crescent Crossing is a little bit busy with uh, Flora. Um, and uh, sometimes they see Aster as they run through the woods, because she can uh, eventually has a wild form as well. Um, and uh, she finds uh, finds love with the animals and becomes a furry. That's why she didn't like Pont. He wasn't hairy enough. Yep. <laughs> all right. Uh, that's it for us with Princesses and Perils. Uh, thank you all. I had a lot of fun. You all are mm -hmm. hilarious. It's always fun to game with you all. Uh, and thank you to Princesses perils and princesses the game uh for letting us uh use uh your cool art as backgrounds and everything uh i had a lot of fun playing uh, and i enjoyed the intro adventure that was a fun one uh let's do some shout outs jeff i'm gonna go ahead and start with mine because i'm taking the initiative here uh i'm making a weird west game uh it's called huckleberry it's a lot of fun uh a, a lot of people on here have played it uh it they all give it five stars, uh, especially my mom. She gives it seven out of five stars. Uh, there is a link in the description, huckleberryrpg.com. Uh, if you go there uh, and you sign up, uh, the quick start will be sent to your inbox as soon as it is published on August 1st. Uh, we're coming up on that rapidly. Uh, there's still a good bit of work to do, but I, I feel confident we're going to hit the deadline. Uh, it, it's coming together nicely. And we got some really cool art. I actually just changed the website today. So if you haven't seen it recently, uh, go check it out again uh, and look at some other cool art. Uh, also, why not just talk about Discord while we're at it? Uh, Lollygaggers has a new Discord server. Uh, come join uh, and hang out and uh, talk with us. You get all the updates on our uh, uh, sessions as they go live. And we have an episode discussion channel on there. Uh, so while you're in Twitch chat, you can also see the gifts that we spam uh, because we make jokes on Discord and Twitch uh, as we're playing, uh, like Melissa showing a gif of having spider webs in your hair. Uh, and while you're on there, you can join the playtest section and playtest Huckleberry while you're at it. Uh, I'm running playtests uh, once a week or so, uh, and they're open first come, first serve. So if you want to come play games with us, that's how you do it. Jeff? Uh, I'm sorry, Garblag. Aaron, what's going uh, on with Garblag? We've got some Marvel Multiverse tomorrow, uh, and we're going to be prepping to get ready to start the next Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay 4th Edition campaign, which will be taken over on Wednesdays. We'll be doing some character creation soon, so that'll be a lot of fun. And then you can join Ben on Thursdays uh, in the GM seat as he continues to run Season 3 of uh, the Modifius Dune campaign about House Dargoosh. All of that is at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Fantastic. Now, Jeff, what else have I missed? All right, man. Uh, next game after tonight is Thursday. We've got Simba Room. You can see everyone here but Steven because he hates us. Uh, Friday, 
Aaron uh, is going to be running some Warhammer 40K, Wrath and Glory, probably TT, uh, TKBKing us all. It's uh, pretty close. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Things yep. went things went kind of south. So we'll see how that goes. A little sideways. A little sideways. Yeah. Just a little. Just just a lot. A lot Small sideways. Amount. Uh, Saturday, Call of Cthulhu, uh, Eternal Lies campaign, uh, finishing up Los Angeles. It's uh, it's a doozy. Also, could have a TPK in that. It's it's definitely possible. Uh, two in a row. Could we do two in a row? Let's just throw in some room again. It's just a <laughs> room too. While we're at it, why not? Uh, and then Monday we'll be doing some Prag Empire. Uh, and uh, check out the YouTube page, Adventures in Lollygagging. We got all sorts of games uh, up there, including other games we're running con- currently right now, like Alien and Delta Green, and all of our past games. Uh, so, uh, go check that out. That's about it. Right. We good. I think we're good. All right. And, uh, I'm going to go ahead and rate us over to blue cottage D and D. So folks that are in the chat, go ahead and, uh, follow that Ray. Have a great rest of your night. We'll see y'all next time. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.